everybody, Nikki here coming at you live from inside the art of building a successful massage practice. Uh, I am Nikki, I'm a massage therapist in Toronto, Ontario, Canada, and I am a graduate of Rock Your Massage Practice Academy, which is the eight-week business coaching program run by Rebecca Diaz-Avedo, who uh, runs this group, this is her group, and uh, her program completely changed my life. I apologize for the look du jour, I am on my way to the gym, um, and so that's why I'm a hot mess. So, um, who checked out yesterday's Heart Centered Selling Workshop? There was a full day workshop that Rebecca ran. It was free for people who could attend live. Um, and uh, for those who purchased the recordings, you should get those soon. And oh, by the way, if you are a current student in Rocky Massage Practice Academy or like me, you're a graduate then uh, you will get access to the replay for free. And that is one of my most favorite things about being a graduate of the Academy is um, we just keep getting goodies. I, I did the Academy in 2018 and I'm still getting all kinds of coaching and webinars and um, access to Rebecca and her, her brilliant wisdom, which is amazing. So uh, today I wanted to talk about... Um, I have posted a, a poll in here a couple weeks ago asking people why did you decide to go out on your own to go into solo practice or if you haven't yet, um, why you want to, why you're thinking about it. And um, the, the answers are pretty interesting. Uh, the most popular, <clears throat> excuse me guys, <laughs> the most popular choice from the poll that I made was that you want to control over your time and your schedule, which I totally get. I I don't think I could ever go back to asking somebody for permission to take time off. Like I want to know that if I want to take time off, I can just block it off in my schedule and I don't have to ask anybody permission. Um, and I love getting to choose my hours and the days and the times that I work and just like randomly taking a week off here or there be just because. So I love that. That's really important to me. And I know that that's important to a lot of you. And it's one of the perks that comes from being self-employed. Um, the second most popular response uh, was just generally getting tired of working for other people. This is kind of a broad answer, but um, I totally get that. Um, for me, it was really hard working for other people. And um, I didn't agree with some of their business practices. It was really frustrating. Um, and uh, a lot of you mentioned wanting to be in control over the decor, like wanting to be able to put your certificates up and decorate the room and choose your curtains and choose the lighting. And I actually, I worked at a clinic once and I hated their lighting. They had this overhead lighting that was dimmable, but it would like flicker every time somebody down the hall flushed the toilet. It was really frustrating. So I actually went to Walmart and I bought a lamp and I just turned those lights off and I brought my lamp to work and plugged it in and used my own lamp because I just got so frustrated with the lighting. So I totally get that control over the decor. I actually uh, in the fall did a complete overhaul of my massage room. I work from home and I hired interior designers. It was my birthday present to myself. I hired interior designers and did this massive renovation of my room and now it's gorgeous. Um, and cleanliness was also an issue for a lot of you. Some of you were talking about um, like oil stained sheets and like oil dripping down the walls in some clinics. That's not cool. So, so I get that. Control over your environment and the decor and the space. Totally get that. Um, the third most popular option of the ones that I gave was money. I'm not surprised by this. Money is not a driving factor for most massage therapists. Y'all are caregivers. Um... I am very motivated by money, but I know that I'm kind of a weirdo, so. <laughs> um, and choosing your clients came in dead last, which again is not very surprising because most of you don't have a niche. For me, choosing my clients was huge. When I worked for other people, I would honestly get panicky. Like that feeling of going into work and not knowing who I was gonna be seeing that day and not knowing what kind of problems they were gonna be presenting with and not knowing what kind of massage they were expecting to get, and what if I'm not strong enough, and what if I don't know about this shoulder condition, or whatever it was, and, uh, oh, thanks, Rebecca. <laughs> You're my favorite weirdo, Rebecca. <laughs> um, and uh, I would get, like, panicky. Like, I would, I, if I walked into work, and they just give you who they give you. Like you just, you have no control over who you see. You might, if you're working for a place for a long time, you get your regulars, but, for the most part, I would just go into work and they would just 
here's your schedule for the day. And it was, you get pregnant people and I would get kids and I would get bodybuilders and I would get firefighters and I would get, uh, professional athletes. I remember, I remember I got this football player huge. Like his biceps were like, I've got nice biceps by the way, but his biceps were like the size of my thigh. I swear this guy was huge. And I felt so helpless. Like I, I just, I barely penetrated the skin. Like I just, I was not strong enough for this guy. I, he had, I think he had bi bicipital tendinosis and I just, I couldn't help him. I wasn't strong enough. And I felt like I was just wasting his time and his money. And he wanted like a nice deep massage and I just couldn't give it to him. And I actually found that really stressful. So when I went out on my own, I thought, no, I'm going to be super picky, super choosy with my clients. Cause I don't want to work with professional football players. I can't help them. It hurts my body. So that was really, really, really important to me, choosing who I work with, which is one of my favorite things about having a niche. I, I get to be very particular with who I allow into my home practice, and I only work with the people who I'm confident I can help. So I'm not going to go on and on about niching today. There are a million and one videos about that. Um, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, if you're American, you pronounce it niche. That's wrong. It's niche. But <laughs> If you want more information on uh, how to find your niche and what a niche actually is, comment niche below and I'll, I'll send you some of Rebecca's videos. Right, Courtney? Isn't it awful? You just like go into work and they give you who they give you and it's like, I don't know if I can help these people. Like the anxiety. I don't have that anymore. Love, love being self-employed. <laughs> um, okay, so that was my fun little poll. And here's my next question. Are you, <laughs> thank you, Rebecca. <laughs> I will never call it a niche. Um, my, my next important question is of all the reasons why you decided to go out on your own, uh, and there are many more reasons than the ones that I listed, but are you doing it? Are you achieving those goals? Are you hitting those targets? The reasons why you decided to go out on your own, did that come to fruition for you? Because if you take a look back at your reasons for wanting to go on your own, for most people, time, like control over your time, control over your schedule. If we're being honest, come on, making more money, um, being selective with your clientele, building your dream space, control over the decor, all of these things, all of these reasons why we go out on our own, are you doing it? And if you are, awesome, amazing, comment below, tell me that you're running your dream practice because we want to celebrate. We love to celebrate each other's successes in this group. Um, we love to cheer each other on, but if you're not doing that, if self-employment is not what you thought it would be and you're not quite hitting those goals, um, why not? Why, why do you think that is? Because something that I see all too often is, um, you know, for instance, therapists get, maybe they get tired of working on a split or they get tired of making pennies on the dollar and not making great wages when they're working for, say, a clinic or, you know, especially a chain spa. Um, and they think that the real money is in private practice, which it is if you know your numbers. Um, but if you're like me, you learned the hard way <laughs> that, um, one, there is a lot of additional work that goes into running a business than just giving the hands-on massage. Um, and two, running a business is expensive. I did not factor in my business expenses when I opened my practice. Um, and all that extra money that I thought that I'd be earning by going out on my own, um, it basically just vanished as soon as it hit my bank account. And I was like, what's happening? Yeah. Cause I had business expenses that I didn't consider. <laughs> um, I didn't know my numbers when I first opened my practice before I met Rebecca, I didn't, I didn't know anything about budgeting and business expenses and, and how to set my rates. Um, I, did what everybody else does, which is I took a survey of the area, I looked around, I saw what everybody else was charging, and I lowballed it. I undercut the competition. The competition. Uh, I charge less than them, and I know that's what most of you are doing. So I don't judge you for doing that, but it is not the right way to do things for sure. And I want you to learn from my mistakes. Um. So I, uh, at the time I was, I was working for a clinic. I was making, um, $60 per hour as an independent contractor at a clinic. And so 
I quit the clinic, opened up my own practice and started charging $90 an hour, which at the time was low for my area. And I thought that's an extra 30 bucks an hour, right? Completely neglected to factor in the business expenses and all of the additional hours. And so here I am thinking 90 bucks an hour, that's so much money. Guys, 90 bucks an hour is nothing. My first year in business, I broke even. Every single penny that I earned, I put right back into my business. I invested heavily in my business um, to grow it, which was an excellent use of my money, by the way. <laughs> but yeah, I, I learned the hard way that like, oh, 90 bucks, not a lot of money when you're working for yourself. Even when I work from home, because I thought, you know, I can't have that many expenses working from home. I did a whole other video about that. It's called the, the myth of low overhead about the actual cost of running a business. Um, so yeah, the, the money thing, got that way wrong. Don't do that, don't do what I did. <laughs> Um, I also see a lot of therapists saying that they want control over their time and their schedule. That's one of the major reasons why we decide to go out on our own. But then what happens is I see therapists so desperate for clients that they're working at seven in the morning and they're working at nine at night and they're working evenings and weekends when those are the times that they want to spend with their kids and their family. And some of you don't even have a set schedule. I've seen therapists who just take people whenever and so they'll have they'll be working seven days a week and get maybe two or three clients in a day when what you really want is a set schedule with, you know, whatever, three days, four days, five days a week, however much you want to work. And you want those days to be fully booked so that you don't have to work all day, every day because you're just desperate for clients and you're saying yes to everyone. So some of you want control over your time and your schedule, but you're not getting it. And that is heartbreaking guys. I don't want to see that for you. Um, yeah, you end up working like days and hours that you don't even want to work because you think that that's when other people want massages and it's not necessarily the case. People will want to come to you when you are working, when you can get really skilled at marketing. Um, and uh, let's see, what else? I've talked to therapists who have dreams of taking lengthy vacations with their families. Um, and then I ask them, are you doing that? And they say that they can't afford to and they can't even afford to give themselves like a long weekend because they're just so desperate for clients and they're undercharging and there's not a lot of structure in their business. And this again is really heartbreaking and it doesn't have to be this way. When I started working with Rebecca, which was very shortly after I opened my private practice, um, she has you set out goals. And one of my, oh, hey, Brian, what's up? <laughs> um, one of my, uh, one of my big goals, um, was I really, I wanted to earn enough money that I could live a comfortable life, which by the way, I'm in Toronto. It's a very expensive city. So I have to earn a lot of money to live comfortably. <laughs> um, and I wanted to have enough to um, have some savings, to donate generously to charity and to take lengthy vacations every year. I wanted to take a big, expensive, long trip every year. And I worked with Rebecca in 2018 and less than a year later, in 2019, I took a six-week vacation to Southeast Asia. And then a year later, I took a six-week vacation to South America. And then the pandemic happened, so I haven't traveled in a while. But in a couple of weeks, I am taking two weeks off and doing the West Coast of Canada, which is very expensive. Guys, this is a $10,000 trip. Um, traveling in my own country is super expensive. <laughs> Uh, and I'm going with my mom and let me tell you, my mom ain't no backpacker. So we're, we're doing this trip the right way, like five star hotels and it's going to be nice. So it's an expensive trip and, um, I'm doing it all with the money that I earned from massaging with the tools and the lessons and the strategies that I learned from Rebecca, um, Oh, thank you, Rebecca. I, I love traveling, so I'm glad other people like watching it. <laughs> but I'm I'm living my dream. I set out these goals, and now I'm doing it. I'm donating more to charity than I ever have before, because before, when I wasn't making good money, I couldn't afford to give as much as I wanted to. And I'm not saying this to brag, like, oh, I'm so generous. It's just this is something that's really important to me, and I hated that I couldn't afford to do it. And travel is really important to me, and I hated that in my previous life, I couldn't afford to do it. And now I'm doing it. And it's just, it's the best feeling. And I get to take enough time off work that I still love my job. That 
burnout and breaking down your body and injuring yourself and getting tired and I don't have that. I take so much time off work that when I'm at work, I'm there 100% and I am energized and I am present with my clients because I still love my job because I can afford to take time off and go and travel and recharge and I want that for you if that's what you want whatever your goals are your goals don't have to be the same as mine but i want you to be able to achieve those goals and your business should be a vehicle to get you the the lifestyle of your dreams and and it's not for too many of you and it doesn't have to be that way also yeah rebecca excellent point when you're working for somebody else you can't just like up and go for six weeks (laughs) so um that's again one of the perks of being self-employed if you do it the right way Um, and, uh, I mentioned this before, but I just want to repeat that I'm seeing all of this without judgment because I made so many of these mistakes myself. So I'm not coming down on you and I'm not judging you. I just, I see a lot of you struggling unnecessarily in a lot of the ways that I used to struggle. And I'm telling you, it doesn't have to be this way. Um, you can get help. And Rebecca is the pro. She's the best person to help you with your private massage practice because that's all she does all the live long day is help people open and run their private massage practices and thrive and chase their dreams and actually achieve them. And it's just, I am endlessly inspired by the results that I see from other people who have worked with her. It's just, it blows my mind. Like it brings me to tears, honestly. Um, so Yeah, yeah, it doesn't have to be this way. When I opened my private home practice, before I met Rebecca, I had no idea what I was doing. I was undercharging. I was working days and hours that I hated because I thought that that's what other people, that's, those were prime times for massage. That's when other people wanted massages. Um, And I was relying on word of mouth because I just didn't have any other strategies. Um, And word of mouth is great, but it takes a long time and you don't have any control over who they send to you. Like some people might come to you and be like, oh, I'm going to send you my sister. And maybe her sister has all kinds of problems that you can't help, you know. Word of mouth is handy and it's nice, but it's slow, guys. And also it's not your client's job to fill your practice. It's yours. So um, I went it alone for six weeks and I thought that's enough of that. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm getting help. And I found Rebecca and I watched her videos in this group, by the way, she's got a million and one videos. So I devoured her videos and I fell in love with her and I called her up and I gave her my credit card on the phone and I never looked back and my business skyrocketed. I literally tripled my business in two months from working with her and it's just been an upward trajectory ever since. And I want that for you. Um, let's see here. Sorry, I've got some notes. That's why I keep looking down. Anyway, I'm going to try to make this short. Brevity is not my forte. (laughs) So I'm going to let you guys go. But I just want you to know that I know a lot of you out there are already self-employed and you're you're not quite hitting the mark or maybe it's not what you thought that it would be. Um, Or some of you really want to be self-employed because you have all these wonderful images of of what it's going to be like and you haven't made that leap yet. And I just, I want to be an example of what's possible, that success is at your fingertips if you're willing to invest in yourself, if you're really willing to be committed and to work hard. Um, And uh, and honestly, I think that the, the fastest, easiest, best way to do that is through coaching. You can go it on your own. I don't recommend it. If you get solid mentorship, you are gonna avoid so many costly mistakes that you're making. The DIY route is honestly the most expensive. I know people do it because it's cheaper. DIY is always the most expensive because it takes so much time and so much guesswork and so much emotional anguish of just having no direction and not having strategies and not having systems in place and just guessing and waiting and hoping. Hope is not a strategy. Strategies are strategies. (laughs) I got all of my strategies from Rebecca. She taught me how to be like a sales and marketing machine. And now I actually really enjoy sales and marketing. And I've built the practice of my dreams and I make excellent money and I take a metric ton of vacation. I work four days a week, nine months a year. And uh, so if you include weekends, it's about 200 days off a year where I'm not massaging. Um, And like I said, I've got a two week vacation coming up. Um... And I only work with, with my ideal clients and they value my time and they, they pay me when they cancel. 
They don't even blink. They'll call me and be like, oh, my kid got sick. You know, go ahead and charge my card. It's just like it brings tears to my eyes. It's honestly the best feeling. And I want that for all of you. I'm in control of my practice and, and my free time. And I have the money to do what I want in my free time, you know, go to all the concerts I want to go to and travel the world and donate to charity and, um, you know, spend lots of time with my friends because I always have a three day weekend. And it's just like, I'm just so grateful that I found Rebecca and I'm so grateful that I found her when I did, because some of you have been struggling for like five, 10, 15 years. And it doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't. So I'm sorry. I'm getting emotional. <laughs> Um, Rebecca, I know you're watching. You changed my life and I just love you so much. Um, and I'm so grateful for you. And, uh, anyway, so <laughs> I've never been happier. I've never been more confident in, in my business. Um, and just knowing that with just my brain and my two hands, I can make excellent money. And it's just, it's so liberating. And I really think that as a woman, as a woman of color, um, I think it's really important for women to be financially independent and financially secure, even if we have partners and parents and people who can help us. I just think this is something that I value is women's empowerment and women's liberation. And most massage therapists are women and people who live on the margins. And I want more for all of us. Um, and that is my mission is women's empowerment. Um, no shade to the men out there. Um, and, and the people of other genders, um, nothing but love for all of you. <laughs> um, so I just want to ask you one more time, why really think about it? Why did you decide to go out on your own and are you doing it? And if you are amazing, comment below, we'll celebrate you. And if you're not, there's help. I implore you, visit rockyourmassagepractice.com to learn more about business coaching. It will literally change your life. And if you are ready to book a free 60-minute discovery call because you're tired of me nagging you, <laughs> visit rockyourmassagepractice.com forward slash application and you can book a free call with a member of Rebecca's team. You will be in excellent hands and you will get clarity on the next steps for your business. Um... You guys are the best. Thank you for uh, <laughs> putting up with me today. I am off to the gym and I will see you next time. Have a great Saturday.